Hello. Um, when is it gonna start? Uh, we'll get started in the next couple minutes. We'll wait um, until we have everyone joined, probably 5.02, 5.03.
All right, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming today. Um, so today is our Java lesson. Uh, we'll continue more of what we did last week with if statements and everything. Um, if you have any questions about the homework, um, you can message us on Slack. We also have the GitHub link that we shared with everyone that has um, the class files and all the homework solutions. So um, check that out as well. So let me share my screen. Um, excuse me, will the uh, videos for a lesson uh, for class three be posted soon? Oh, was that not posted? Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so after class, yeah, I'll post both lesson three and lesson four. Okay. Was it posted for the Python? Do you check that out by any chance? No, it wasn't posted for the Python okay. as well. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. So we'll get both of those out after class today. All right, thank you. Okay, um, so can you guys all see my screen? Is it big enough? along with terminal yes okay yes cool so last week we went into a little bit about random um random variables so remember that if you include this statement at the top this will import a random class that we can use to work with random numbers in java so and then to define a random uh object this is how we can create a random object that is from this random class that we're importing so this basically creates a variable named rand of the type random so we can access all the different um, functions in this class random we went more into the documentation on that last week so i can say here's a random integer and i want to say this is rand dot next int through six so remember if we define something like this this will give us a random number from zero, one, two, three, four, five. But in our um, in our demonstration last week, we said we add one so that we can get one, two, three, four, five, and six, just like that. Um, and then that'll be like a simulation of a sort of a dice roll. So then we can say system.out.print when the dice rolled a brand int. So then what this is doing is this will get a random integer and put that into our variable ran int and then print out whatever the number of the dice rolled. So if I can, if I run this, dice four, and then you say the dice rolled a four, and then you can run it again, and we'll get a different number. So you can keep playing with that. Those are random integers. So I was just trying to show that how we need to import something at the top. So you can't use this random until you import. And then this is how you can sort of define an object. So <clears throat> another uh, useful one that you can use to import is this class called scanner. So we didn't go into this last week. Um, this is a new concept. So we can do the same thing. Scanner, I'll name it scan. Scan is equal to new scanner. So in this case, scanner, so random, so when you create a random variable like this, this random object um, creates, so it creates a new random object and there's nothing in these parentheses because the, the way that you can sort of initialize an object like this is without anything in here. But with this scanner object, you need to create this object by passing in a system dot in. So, what this basically does is saying that I want to create this scanner object and then it will um, allow me to use, um, use video input. I mean, use, uh, user input. So let me, let me show the documentation for this. Wait, can you please, uh, teach us again, how to, um, access the math directories? The math. So yeah, so that will be in the a video. So I guess uh, class three's video didn't get posted, but the math, we went through that last week. So that'll be in that video. So you can check that out if you want to go through that. Um, yeah, so here we have the scanner class. And what we have here is it basically shows, so as I went through last week, you can kind of go through the documentation to see um, what different classes do. So here is the scanner class, and it goes, shows you some examples now you can create a scanner object just as I did over here in the code. Um, and then you can show, so show some examples. But if you scroll down a little bit, and then you get to this place, so constructor summary. So constructors will get into a more 
um, in the future, in, in the uh, next few weeks of this class. But what a constructor does is basically defines how you can create a variable. So in uh, this case, the scanner class um, has, it takes in here a file source, or it can take a file and a string, all these different um, objects. So we, you don't obviously know a lot of these except for string, but in this case, we are passing in an input stream. So in our case, the input stream is system.in, which allows us to take user input. We've always been working with system.out, which is an output stream. So that allows you to output to your console. But in this case, since we're trying to get user input, we're using system.in. If you have um, more questions, feel free. I'll post this link um, in the chat so you guys can look at it. And here's more all the information um, you need to know about scanner. So now if we have a scanner, I can say system.out.println, enter your name. And I'll do print actually, so it stays on the same line. And then I can say string name is equal to scan.next line. So again, if you look at the scanner, you can see, so this has the ways that you define it. So the constructor, so that's what this is considered the, when you're constructing the variable. Then it has all the different methods that you can use. So we have all of these, you can see it has next. It will return true if the scanner has another token in its input, meaning that there was a, a word that was inputted. It has all these different uh, methods that you can go and look at and learn how to use. So in this case, we're using next line. So if I go and find next line, right here. So this advances the scanner past the current line, returns the input that was skipped basically means that whatever is inputted when you're saying um, this, when you're, when you're writing this code, it will input, it will return whatever that input was into this variable name. So I can show, I'll, I'll show this. Wait, can you please run the code so that we can see? Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, so I'll enter my name and then it will print out Shivam. Because so what this is, it took whatever my input was, and then it printed that out again. So and how does the example. dice? How does the dice code print that certain sequence? This code? Yeah. So this is this is what we did last class with random. So this is a random variable, and then we use rand .next int to get all the numbers from zero to five, and then we added one, so it's the numbers from one through six, which is what would be on a dice, and then it randomly picks one of those numbers, and then we just printed it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. So theoretically, when you're saying system.out.print and you're saying enter your name, it'll basically give you the option to enter your name. And then what does the next line do when you say string, uh, string name equals scan dot next line? Yeah, so I'll run it one more time. So, so all right, this is from the dice code. We'll ignore that for now. So it says enter your name and then nothing's happening, right? So the program is stuck right here. So it's waiting for me to input something. So it's going to basically whatever. So this line that we're looking at, whatever is inputted here, it can be like a number. Like, so since it's a next line, it doesn't matter whether it's a string or a number or like these random characters like that. You can input whatever you want. So if I were to, for example, just do something random like that, it will just print that out. So it basically takes whatever I input and then prints that out. I see. Yeah. So another thing that we can do is say system.out.print enter your age and then wait how come you're not using system sorry how come you're not using system that out that print lin for um oh so i can use name. print lin but i'm just using print so like in this case you know how it's staying on the same line oh so it's so kind of like input in python yeah yeah okay thank you so then this case since age is an integer so i want to make sure that my the whatever the user is inputting that I want to make sure it's an integer. So I'm going to say next int. So that ensures that it will only accept numbers as the input. So now I can do system.out.print my age is age. So I can run this and I say my name. So then now I can enter my age and I say there, my age is 19. So then now if I were to run it again and I say this, Enter my age. Let's say I just put in like, an, let's say I put in a word. Then Java is going to throw this error at me saying input mismatch exception, which is basically saying that whatever you input it is not matching the type that we expected as an integer here with age. So sometimes like 
if you were if you were if this were to be some sort of application that was like an Android application or something, and you're getting an input, you're telling your user to input the age, right? If they, for example, mess up and don't actually input an age and input a word instead, what this error would usually would do is just crash the application, and that's not what you want to do. So, so some ways that you can prevent crashes are if you were to say enter your age. I say if sc scanner dot has next int. So scan remember is the name of our scanner variable. If it has an next int, then I want to say this integer age is equal to the next int, whatever that input was. And then I can print out the same thing again. But if there is not an integer, meaning someone accidentally inputted a word or um, a character or something like that, then I can say system.out.print your input was invalid. Um, yeah, we'll just keep it like that. Your input was invalid. So then now I can run it one more time. And I can input my name. And then if I input my age, obviously the same thing will happen. Now, if I were to do it, then I say like a word instead of a number, then it will just say my input is invalid. And that won't really crash my application. It will just give feedback to the user so that they can understand what they need to input. So this is using if statements, what we learned last class. So then again, if you're not too comfortable with these, just check out the video that we'll post again later. So I'll stop right here just to get all the questions done with scanner. Yeah, so if you were there for the Python class, we went through if else. Um, this is the same thing, but this is just different syntax because it's Java. Uh, we also went through it in the Java class. Sure. So the scanner Sorry, basically reviews the code and makes uh, decisions based on it. Yeah, yeah, that's a, one way to put it. So yeah, scanner can- scan dot next line supposed to mean? Next line will basically just take, that's technically meant for strings. So whatever you type there, it will, it will just take that string and assign that to that variable. Got it. Okay, so now uh, we can go through another example that we kind of went through last class. So if I say enter a number, I'll keep it print again. So, it's, so then I can say int my number is equal to scan.next int. So again, this this will so in this case I'm only doing I'm not using this check that we did so this would be better practice to use this check but just for this um, for this example I'm just not going to type all that code out so then I can say if my number modulo two is equal to zero print ln my number is even else get that same. So what this is doing is it takes, it says enter a number and then it will scan for the a number that the user is inputted. And then we're checking whether this is even. So remember how we can check whether a number is even or odd is we can use this modulo, which basically returns the remainder of the division between the two numbers. So whatever number I input divided by two, if that remainder is equal to zero, then we know it's an even number. Otherwise it's an odd number. So we want to say that it's odd. Oh, so I forgot my plus right here. Oh, let me. I'm out this code for now. Oh, wait, uh, I know how you said that modulus was the remainder, but mm -hmm. um, what does it mean when you say my number modulus two? Like, what is that expression supposed to mean? So that this is basically so. What this are you talking about? This entire expression? Yes. So yeah. So this is saying the, my number is whatever number I input. So if I go through and show that so oh i forgot to i accidentally commented out this so since i'm using the scanner variable i can't comment out that variable because i'm using it yeah so here enter a number so then my number will equal whatever number i input here so in this case i'll say it's 19. Mm. so it says 19 is odd so it takes that number 19 that. and then divides it by two and then since the remainder is a one rather than zero, it knows that the number is odd. But for example, if I were to run it again and I say 
20, then it's even because 20 modulo 2 is equal to 0. And this is 20. Uh, like, what does modulo mean? So 20 modulo 2, what does that mean? So 20 divided by 2, and then it will give whatever the remainder of that is. So 20 divided by 2 has it gives it a remainder of 0. So it's going to give 0. Yeah. And um, if it's odd, then it will give a remainder. So then it will say odd, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like, yeah, I just showed if I do like 15, then yeah, 15 is odd. And the equals, the double equals means is it equal or not equal to 0? Yeah, so if this was not equal to, then that would mean that this one would be odd and then this one would be even. Because if it's not equal to zero, then you know it's odd. So you can do the same yeah. thing like that. Excuse me? Okay. Excuse me? Yeah. Um, can you do the same thing with um, <clears throat> like the code you did right now with um, strings? So you mean if I were to do something like this, like next line, and I say string like that? Yeah. So since this is, so I can do technically do that. So I'll show you what happens. So if I, oh, okay. So I already threw an error. So because since my number is of type string, then I can't really use these math operations on it um, because it's like a string rather than a number. So then you want to make sure that your types are always um, exactly what you want. So you can't really do this division and stuff with strings, but you can like cast it and stuff. We'll, we'll go into more complex stuff like that in the future. But for now, just know that your type has to be like in line with what your scanner is doing. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll comment out scanner now. So that's enough for input for today. And the exclamation equals means it's not equal to. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go into looping. So we have four loops. So four loops here, I'll copy and paste this code in here. So basically for loops, you use them whenever you know exactly. So you, you know exactly the number of times to run a loop. So a for loop would be, it's comprised of uh, three different statements. So you have one statement separated by a semicolon, then another statement by a semicolon, then your third one, and it's all within parentheses, leading with this word for. And then we use the same brackets that we've been using with if statements and in our classes up here. So use the same brackets, and then whatever code you want to type will be indented um, inside, and then you type whatever code you want there. So a quick example of a for loop is, so I'll type it all out, and I'll explain exactly what it's doing. Yeah, we'll get into four each loops soon after this. So if we have this, oops, if we have this right here, I can print out and it says the value of i is zero, the value of i is one, two, three, four. So it starts from zero, goes all the way up to four. So in this statement, what we have here is we're declaring an integer i. So var i is not valid in Java. So I saw, I'm seeing in the chat right now, var is not really uh, like a type that you can use in Java, but integer is what we use to define like different variables, how we've been doing in the past with strings up here, ints up here. So it's the same thing, same concept. So we have an int i, which is equal to zero. And then this would be our condition. So this second statement basically says, I'll keep executing this loop until this condition is um, not satisfied. So while this i is less than five, then I'm going to keep incrementing the i until we reach the value of five. So it goes through it the first time. I is, so the first time, i is equal to zero. And then it increments. So then i is equal to one. And then as you see in our output, it went one, two, three, four. And then once it reached the value of five, the loop stopped and it stopped printing out all those values. What is plus plus equal? What's plus plus? Oh, yeah. So plus plus, I'll get into that. So I plus plus is the same thing as what we've been doing. I plus equals one, and then I equals I plus one. So I can do all any any version of these three in here. So I can say I plus equals one, and then I, I'll still get the same output, zero, one, two, three, four. Or I can say I equals I plus one, and that's the same output as well. 
So again, this is basically every time that it executes a loop, how do you want to change this variable that you defined here? So in this case, I'm just incrementing it by one. Another thing that we can do is let's say we'll make this less than 10, less than or equal to 10 actually. And then we'll say i plus equals two. So what this does is starts i at a value of zero and then keeps increment, incrementing i by two until it reaches the value of 10. And since this is less than or equal to, that includes the value of 10 as well. So I can run that and then we get zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So this will just be all even numbers starting at zero. And then you can do the same thing. So if I have like 11, I can do two. This will just be all odd numbers. One, three, five, seven. So these are just different ways that you can use the loops. It's the same thing that, yeah. Um, but like you can just use different increments. So you can keep it as, as a plus plus or plus equals one. So if, yeah, if you see in the chat right now, they're explaining how this plus plus is sort of like a shortcut for that. Plus equals one. Um, another thing is, so, so we'll keep this here. Um, so we'll go one through 10. So that I is one through 10. So we'll just print out that. Yeah, so this plus plus won't add, it doesn't add two, it only adds one. But if you want to add two, then you can use what we've done in the past, like plus equals two or equal I equals I plus two or three or four, or whatever you want. But in this case, I'm just going to do a plus plus by one. So similarly, you can do, so if I create another for loop, I'll say in J. So, so yeah, one thing I forgot to mention was, so when we create this integer I, we say that this integer I is equal to one. And this I value can only be used within the for loop. Think of, it's sort of like, it's considered a local variable, meaning that I can't use this variable I anywhere outside this for loop. And once this for loop is done executing, this variable I is basically taken away from memory and Java doesn't understand what I is. Same thing with this J over here. So if I were to start this J at 10, I can say J is greater than or equal to one, J minus minus, I'll do the same thing. I'll just add a space in the middle. So yeah, so then we have the value of J is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So minus minus is the is meaning the same thing as plus plus, but instead of incrementing one, it will decrement it by one. So if we remember J minus minus, J minus equals one, J equals J minus one. These are all three different uh, ways of decrementing the variable j by one, but it's just, it's the same exact code. It's, the code is doing the exact same thing. So any questions on the basics of for loops? Okay, um, I'll go back to this scanner example. So I'll just take these two lines of code So I defined a scanner again. So the, since this one's commented out, I just made it again down here. And I say, enter a number and then my number. And then I can say for this integer. Um, here, I'll actually change up the example real quick. So enter a minimum. Okay, so yeah, I just typed out all this code real quick. Um, so what this is doing is we have a scanner object here that we define, and then we say enter a minimum number for our range. And then this integer min, which is what we defined, will take that minimum number that the user inputs, and then enter a maximum that will take the maximum number that the user inputs, so they can input two different numbers. What this loop does, it will, t it will start at the minimum number that they specified, and then go all the way up until that max value 
um, incrementing i by one each time and then printing out i. So we, we can show, I'll show how this works. So if I say my minimum is 12, my maximum is 16. Oh, so this, so okay, this, this printed out on the same line. Um, I'll do a really quickly. Okay, so it should look a little better now. So we have 12, 13, 14, 15. So basically what we have here is we have um, this minimum 12 and it goes all the way up until 16 and then I is being incremented one each time and I'm printing them on the same line here notice I'm not using an LN I'm just using a print and then adding a space after like that and then it'll just print out each number um, like that so 12 13 14 15 so I can run it again and then for example if my minimum is 2 and my maximum is like 99 and it'll print out all these numbers um, so it doesn't show like it's on the same line but it is, it's just wrapping to the next line. So this is how you can just print out um, large ranges of numbers using user input. Does this all make sense? Oh yeah, you have a question? What does the LN mean in Quinlan? So the LN means that we're uh, printing to, an X, to the next line. So if we just use a print, then as you, can, so as you can see here, it's all printing on the same line. But then if I were to use an LN like that, then let's just say 11 to 21, then you see it prints out on different lines like that. Yeah, so the scanner is just you use for user input. Oh yeah, so I noticed someone saying string or int. So yeah, you can input um, doubles as well. So for example, um, if I want to do a quick example, enter a decimal, double, decimal is equal to next. So this would just have to specify as next double. I can just say, Enter a decimal 12.4 and I'll just print out that 12.4. Excuse me, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. How would you be able to input booleans in this? So yeah, so I just showed um, for a double. So if you let's, if we go to, do I still have that open? Yeah, so we still go to this documentation and search for boolean. Yeah, like has next boolean. So you can do the same thing, um, next boolean, and then you can input a boolean and then um, assign that to a boolean variable. So it'll just be the same thing using the boolean instead of double. I see. So yeah, all that information is on this if you're interested in, in whether you can use booleans, integers, doubles, all that. It has all the information here. Okay. Um, so now I'll go into another type of loop. So if we are... If you know, if we kind of, we kind of know the basics of for loops now. So we'll go into something called a while loop. So we have while loops here and I'll, so basically what while loops do, so I'll print out this. So it has a condition um, similar to if statements, if statements have a condition like that. So while loops also have a condition and then a code inside uh, the brackets like that. But basically in the while loop, whatever code you specify inside will continuously be get um, will be executed until the condition is met or is like false. So for example, I can just define a variable count here. And then I say while my count is less than five, then I want to say system dot out dot print in count. And then I'll say count plus plus. So I'll execute this. Oops. And this does zero, one, two, three, four, similar to our example with the four loops up here. So what this is basically doing is that we say that count starts at zero and we're printing out count and then we're incrementing by one. So using this plus plus, use similar to what we did with the I plus plus in the top. And then it'll keep getting incremented until count reaches the value of five. 
And we can see the same thing here. So it reaches a value of four and then the loop stopped executing. So sometimes if you forget to include this um, count, then count will always stay at zero. And if I were to run my program, it'll just be an endless loop of printing zeros, which is not exactly what I want. So you always wanna make sure that you include that increment at the bottom so that your loop is able to end. Because there's a lot of times in programs when you're creating it that um, if you don't include that, then your program will just always execute. And that's just um, like a waste of time. And like sometimes if you put that in an app, then like the problems with the user come up. So I was gonna include these increments to make sure that your loop is ending. Another way that you can, in some cases, you do want a loop to like to continuously be going. So you can say while true, and then you can just say system is it true. Yeah, true lowercase. Yeah. And this will again just continuously be executing. It'll just print out a bunch of the same words that you specified just like this. So that's how you can do an infinite loop. And we'll always run until this condition is met. So that's just a pretty simple um, explanation of while loops. Are there any questions on while loops? Any questions on for loops or while loops in general? Excuse What's me, I have a question. What? Okay. Yeah. You can go. No, no, no. You can go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. What's the difference between while loops and for loops? Exactly. Yeah. So for a for loop, as I was kind of uh, mentioning, is that a for loop, like, is you know exactly the number of times you want to run the loop. So in this case, I know that I want to execute this 10 times so that it will print out these value 10 different times. But sometimes, in like, for example, this case, this will just infinitely be running. So you don't really know um, how many times you want to run it. We'll go and we'll, you'll understand more about the difference between them when we'll get into an example now. Um, but yeah. Was there another question? Ah, uh, yes. So when you're saying while true and then you're saying system.out.println hello, is it essentially printing out hello? Like what condition are we saying has to be true? Yeah. So in this case, there is no condition. So basically I'm saying that I want this condition to always be true. Um, and like, so, and then that's how, and it will continuously just print forever unless we'll learn more into like some keywords. So I can use like a break, which will basically break me from the loop, but we'll get into that in like future classes. But for now, I just um, need to understand that. This is just a, a loop forever. Sorry, what was there a question? So basically currently when you run the code, will the while loop run hello infinitely? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, so now I'll get into something called arrays. Um, arrays, if you were in the Python class, we learned about that uh, briefly last time. So it's basically arrays list, it's just a list of items. So if I were to create an array, so there's two different ways that you can create an array. So one way is you can say int array like this. So you use these double brackets to signify that you're creating an array or a list of integers. And then you can specify what your array is using these curly braces the same, same curly braces that we've been using up here. And then I can just put random numbers like this. So then this is what uh, would be considered an array. Yeah, arrays work pretty similar to the ones in Python. So yeah, so this is what we consider an array or a list. So uh, one thing that I can do is just, I'll do this system.out.println. So if we want to print out our array, if I were to run this code, then it gives me this nasty number like this, this with I at 10 E, all, we don't really know, understand what this means, but basically when you do a system.out.print on just your, the name of your um, array like that, it will give out this hash code. So this hash code is basically the the code that Java creates for this variable so that you can, um, so that it is able to understand what this array is and how can I access the, this array. So this, this number is um, irrelevant to, to, to us, but um, Java uses it to reference arrays. So the way that we can see like a nice list is we can use, so what we'll have to do is import another thing. So we'll do import.java.util.arrays like that. 
So arrays, again, you can look up the arrays class. I won't go through it right now, but you can use that to look out, look up um, the different functions that you can use in an array. So one thing that we can do is we can say arrays dot two string on this. So what this basically does, it says that I want to make this array into a string that I can print out onto the um, command line. So if I were to run this. Wait, what is the import of Java that you told me? Um, yeah, one second. So yeah, so then we got to print out our um, array like this. So yeah, so the java.util, so this is the same thing that we've been doing with the scanner and the random class. So now we're importing an arrays class. So when, oh, one way you can mean? easily do all of these is, so what this basically means is that I'm taking, Java already has all these different classes already defined for me to use. So we've been using the random to get random variables. We've been using the scanner to get input. And then now we're using the arrays to access arrays and work with arrays. So you can include all three of these, and this is exactly what we want. Or you can do this, um, dot star, which basically imports all the different classes that are under this java.util package. Well, you'll understand more about what all of these mean in the future. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm seeing a question in the chat. So you can still create arrays without using this, but you um, just to print out the array, that's what I'm using the arrays class for. So it just looks nice like that. So it prints out my array. Wait, so if you have the import java.util uh, uh, asterisk, then you don't need the array scanner and random? Yeah, because this will import everything that, everything that you need. That's all under the util package. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so this is um, how we can print out an array. So I'll print it out right here. So now how can we access uh, different Oh, let me go through one more thing. So, so actually, uh, one thing that I'll go through is with a string, we say, I'll just say my temp string. So we have a string right here. And then if you guys recall from a previous class, the way that we got the total number of characters in a string, we can say my temp string dot length like that with the brackets. So this is basically accessing that length. Um, function from the string class that can print out the number of total number of characters in my string. So remember if we run this, we get 16. So the length of my string here is 16. So another thing that you can do in with arrays is that you can say system.out.print array.length like that. And what this does, so this is without the parentheses, remember. So strings, you always want to include the parentheses, but with an array, you don't include those parentheses. So that, um, because this will give you the number of um, elements in your array. So then now if I were to run this, then I get four, because I do have four different elements in my array, two, 11, 45, and nine. So that's what I want. So now I'll just create a variable, array length is equal to r.length. So basically this takes the value four and will assign it to the variable array length. So I always have my total number of elements in my array into this variable. So then now I can say four, integer i again. So we're doing a for loop. I'll say i is less than the array length. And then i plus plus. So basically, this will execute the total number of times um, equal to the length of my array. So then now what I can do is I can say system.out.println. So I'll explain exactly what this is. What does the arrays dot two string mean? This was this is accessing the string class from the array. Sorry, the string met the two string method from the arrays class, so that you can so we can print out an array just like this. It looks clean like that. So like remember, if we were to print out, that, then it gives us this like nasty number that we don't really want to. That's the hash code, okay. so you don't really need to worry about that. But just remember that you can use this two string to print out arrays nicely. So now what I'm doing here is basically saying, here, I'll comment this out. So this is saying an element at index i is equal to the array i. So this is how you can access, so similar to how we used to do in strings, so this is how you can access different um, elements of your array. So in an array, your first element, so if we have 2, 11, 45, and 9, 
your first element will be at index zero, then your second one will be at index one, then two, and three. So each index, it starts at the counting of zero. So this is how you can access different elements in your array. Um, and then um, that's how, and then if you can see here, it says element at index zero is two, element at index one is 11. So we're starting at zero to get the index, and then it will access that um, number from the array and then print that out. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. So how exactly does that code work again? I wasn't able to understand that. So, so remember, so we have a for loop here. We have this integer i is equal to zero. So we're defining an int. So this is, is what we're using to represent the different indexes in our array. And then we see that this, um, then we say i is less than the total length of the array. So we know that our length is four. So we only want i to go up until four. And then we increment i, I each time. So the first time that I go through my loop, then I say i is equal to zero. And then I'm saying I want to get array bracket i. So array zero, and that is equal to the first element in my array here, which is two. So then it will print out element at index i, which i is equal to zero, is zero. And I put that is two because the value array zero is two. Similarly, when I run it again, i is equal to one, then I say, the array, the, the first index of array is 11. So then I say that is equal to 11. And then I can say element at index one is 11. So that's just how our output is here. Oh, I see. So yeah, so I is just uh, the number that we used here and it's representing the index of each variable of each number in our array here. So do you have to input the um, index that you were trying to take it from? So the, this is just, so since I know that it always starts at zero, the index counting in Java, so then I just create a variable. You don't really need to input anything, but you just create this variable that starts at the zero with index. Oh, and it'll basically just go up to four because there's only like a, a four indexes in the entire array. Yeah, and since the index counting starts at zero and there's only four elements, the last index, um, as we, like, we've gone through in the past, is will be the total length minus one. So since the length is four, it's minus one, which is three. I see. It. All right, got it. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So uh, when you after a, i equals zero, you said i is less than array length. What if you mm -hmm. did a less than or equal to? So yeah, if we did less than or equal to, so then then array length is four, right? So then our index will go zero, one, two, three, and we'll include that fourth one. So since there is no index four in my array, this Java will throw me an error now. So I printed out everything and on the last one it says index four is out of bounds for length four because there's only an index up to the number three. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll slow down to answer some questions. Yeah, so if you, so for example, in a for loop, if I wanted to just print out a specific one, as I saw a question, I can just print out the first, so let's say 10, I want to print it out 10 times. This will access the first element and print that out 10 different times. So I'll just get two, 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 like that. So I'll go, um, I'll give another quick example. So if I have this array of cars like that, Volvo, BMW, Ford, Mazda, um, these different cars, I can say, I can just, if I don't want to include any loop or anything to access that first element, I can say cars zero. And that will give me, oh, let me comment this out. Volvo, which is the first element in here. So, so going back to the string um, to array declarations, how we create arrays. So here, one way that you can create an array is that you include these double, double brackets at the end, or you can include it where you define your type. So either one of these would be okay. So I can also, instead of doing this, I can also do int array is equal to two, like that. So that's also valid. These are just different ways that you can define um, an array. So you said string brackets car. So could you also say string brackets array? And then um, 
Oh, you mean like this? Yes, yes. Yeah, so you can do this as well. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just, just yeah, it's, it's your choice on how you want to do it, but I just, I like, I personally like to do it like this. It was a little clearer that I have an array of strings named cars. Okay, so, yeah, uh, so, so there's two things that I don't understand. Number one, um, the thing below, like the Volvo, BMW, Ford, Mazda, <coughs> I don't really understand that. And the text below it, I don't understand either. So could you please help? So just these two lines? Uh, no, no, no. So the second, so 112 and 114 to 117. Oh, th this this is just so this was just what I was trying trying to show as an example. I'll put that back up here. So this is just how each time. So the first time that you execute this loop, i is zero, and then array zero is equal to two, and this is what will get printed out. I'm just showing like an example of how the what, what's happening during this for loop. Okay. But yeah, so and for what this does line, element and index mean? Oh, so that's what I'm just printing out here. You see, I'm um, in this print statement. Mm hmm. So that's just how I'm printing it out. So element index doesn't really mean anything in this case. Yeah. But yeah, so and, for uh, this case, So for yeah, car ahead. zero, that would be Volvo, right? Yeah, that's so the this first is number. zero is the first index yeah. of, or the first um, value in my array. If I were to do one, that'd be the second one. So this would just print BMW two, then I get Ford, then three, I'll get Mazda. See, so this would be zero, one, two, three. And then if I were to try to access four, how were you doing before? Then I'll get this array out of bounds out of because bounds, there's right? no okay. index four in my array. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'll do, I'll go through a little bit more and then I'll do review. So um, another way that we can change values in our array is if we take this index cars and we say, I want to change the value of cars at index zero. So that in this case, that would be the first value. And I want to say, I want to make that equal to Mercedes like that. And then, so then I'll just do a system.out.println arrays.toString on cars so so yeah first we printed out the first character the first um value value in my array and then we changed the first value to mercedes and then we printed it out so now you can see the new value of our array is mercedes so that's just a simple way that you can change values so i can do the same thing Oops, cars 2 is equal to acura it out again so you can see this is mercedes bmw ford mazda and then we change the second index the next time so then we get acura so you can see how the values are changing as we're editing different indexes in our array and just to reiterate it one more time so if i'll just create one more loop and i'll say so remember how we access the length of an array so previously we accessed the length of an array using dot length without parentheses, while with strings, we have a parentheses like that. So remember with an array, you never want to include those parentheses. So in this case, my array will be cars dot length. That will give me the total length of my cars array. And then we create another for loop. And then I'll just do system dot out dot println. So cars i. So this what this is basically doing is similar to what we did here. It starts me at zero. I is representing my index, and it will continuously increment i until I reach the end of my cars array, and then it will print out each value individually. So we have here Mercedes, BMW, Acura, and Mazda. So after we edit or change the array like that, and then print out each individual element like that. Okay, so yeah, we went through a lot of concepts today. Um, these are very helpful while you're coding in Java. You can do a lot with these. Um, you can all, we can almost create like a simple app or game right now. Um, we will work with these a lot more now in the next few weeks. So I'll do a quick review of everything.
So the review might go past six o'clock. If you guys need to leave at six o'clock, uh, we'll make sure to post this week's recording and last week's recording on the tiny URL. So yeah, I see something in the, in the chat about array list. So don't worry about exactly what an array list is right now. We'll get into that in the future too. So I won't go through this random. We went through that last week. So this is just simply how you can get a random variable. So then, then we went through um, this scanner. So what this did is we created a scanner like that. Um, we created a scanner like this and then we print it out, enter your name. And then this next line basically takes whatever the user inputs in the command line and then we'll print that out. And then same thing here, we said enter your age and then we use this if statement to check whether that our user was inputting a correct integer rather than like a string or a double or something like that. And then we printed it out. So I'll quickly demonstrate uh, what this is. So I'll enter my name and it prints that out. Then I enter my age and it prints it out like that. So then again, remember that if you don't input something and I say like 12.4, then it says my input is invalid because it's expecting an integer rather than a double. A double is a, a decimal. You can represent like fractions. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, since I can't run Java on my uh, computer, I tried p pasting the code into REPL.it and it has like a bunch of errors. Yeah, so um, we'll, I'll, I can work through that with you later. Um, I'm just gonna try to get through this review quickly so everyone can understand these concepts. Uh, when are we gonna learn about static variables? Static variables we're planning to do towards the end. Um, but yeah, we'll still cover that. Yeah, and also if you guys see what Caitlin's saying in the chat, if you understand everything completely, then you, you can feel free to leave right now. The homework will be posted later. What about object-oriented yeah. programming? Yeah, we'll also go through that um, in the next couple of weeks. Oh, excuse me, do you mind if I could, uh, if you could go possibly to the array list area so you can just see that? Yeah, yeah, well, um, I'll just quickly review these. So yeah, so if we print it out, we enter a number here and then the scanner will take an input again and then prints whether that number is odd or not. So I can run that. 14, so this 14 is even. So that's, that's what we did on input. So all this code will be posted if you want to check that out later. And then we quickly went over for loops. So this is an example of a for loop where you can start. So this is my initial number that I create. So I create an integer i starting at um, the number one. And then while basically while i is less than or equal to 10, I'll increment i by one and then print out that value of i until it reaches that value of 10. So it starts at one, you see the value of i is one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you can do the same thing with going down. So minus minus is what we learned um, to decrement by one. So minus 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 equals one. Uh, j equals j minus one. They're all the same thing. So this will just um, go down by one, by one value. And then you can see values of i go from one through 10 and j goes from 10 through one. So those are simple examples. And then, oh yeah, then we did a, so I'll skip this example for now. I'll just go to these while loops. Um, so we went through a while loop. So here I created an integer count. And then while loops basically will, as I said, will continuously be executing the code inside this, um, this these brackets until this condition is um, not met. So while this count is less than five, then it'll continue to execute and we'll increment this count by one. And then we see we get zero, one, two, three, four. So I can do the same thing if I want one, one through five, and then I can say count is equal to one, then count is less than or equal to five. So that will start at one and keep executing until count is um, less than or equal to five. So then in this case, it will go one through five like that. So remember, if you don't include this equals, it won't really include that last number you specify. You see how it'll only do one through four. But then since I include that equals, then I get one through five. So while true is what we did to define an array that are, sorry, a while loop that will always execute. So no matter what, this system.out.println will continue to be printed until I, what will go into future lessons will break out of the loop. 
Um, but for now, you just need to know that this is an infinite loop. So then arrays. So this is quickly what we went through with an array. So this is how we define an array. So remember, you can include the brackets at the beginning or right here. So I personally like it like this. Um, and then this is how we can define an array. I can add as many elements as I really want like that. So these are just other elements that I add. And then remember that if you want to print out an array, if you do this print LN like that, then it will give me, oh, let me comment this out. It will give me this address or hash code, which is I don't really want, which is Java's way of identifying what this array is. But um, what I can do is reference this arrays .to string, which I imported up here using java.util.arrays. So make sure if you want to use that to print out an array, you import it first. Otherwise, Java will throw you an error. And then it will give you dot two string. Um, then you put dot do two string to get the string representation of that array. And then once we do that, then you can see it prints out like a nice list like that, which is easy to see, which we understand. And then um, array dot length is the way that we can access the total length of our array. So in this case, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So array length is gonna be seven. And then I can print out um, the index at each one. So we went through indexes. So, so yeah, so this will be, so the element at index zero is two, at index one is 11, so on up to index six. So remember since the length, so the length of my array is seven. So then the last index is going to be six because it starts at zero rather than at one for counting the indexes. And then as we kind of showed earlier, if I include this equals to, then this is basically saying that I, which is my index can go all the way up to that length of seven. But since there's no index seven, it will throw me an error saying that index seven is out of bounds. So you wanna make sure that this is a less than rather than a less than equal to. So this is just an array of um, integers like that. Um, but then we also can create an array of strings like this. And then I showed different ways to access um, individual, individual um, values from this array. So cars zero will print out Volvo in this case. Um, I'll just show that. So we got Volvo here. And then I can say, I wanna change the value of my cars array at index zero to equal Mercedes. And then I can print that out. And then we see that we get the value of Mercedes here. And then I can also change my value at index two, which in this case is zero, one, two. So I change the value from Ford to Acura. And then I can print that out as well. And then you see we get Mercedes, BMW, Ford, Mazda, and then Mercedes, BMW, Acura, Mazda. So it you can change the different values like that. And then lastly, I just showed it one more time on how we can take this length that we have. So in this case, the length is four and then similarly use the indexes to access each individual element here and then print out each element of this array. So what this does, it goes Mercedes, BMW, Acura, Mazda, and they're printing them on individual lines as shown through this for loop. So the same way that we used a for loop up here, where is it? Um, right here. So this is just printing out I each time. Um, we're going from our min to our max. So in this case, our minimum is the zeroth index all the way up until the last index. And um, then you print out using the cars brackets to access those index. Um, yeah, and then also just to, I like this was confusing for me when I first started coding in Java. I used to always get it mixed up. Um, where is it? Yeah, just so you guys remember. For a string to access the length, you use these parentheses, but then for an array, you don't use those parentheses. So it kind of gets confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's um, pretty simple after that. So that basically wraps up for today. Um, I know there's a lot of concepts, so I'm, I'll be on Slack all week um, answering any questions you have with the homework or about all these concepts. Um, we'll post both videos from last week. I'm sorry last week's video didn't get out, but we'll post that um, tonight. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for coming. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stay after or message me on Slack. Is there any way to automatically put a semicolon at the end of the line of code?
because it's like I'm always forgetting it. <laughs> yeah, and there's no like automatic way. I'd say I always forget it too, if you've probably seen. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if we go to the beginning of the code, yeah, we have those import lines. You have three of them. Mm -hmm. Instead, can we just use java.util.star? Yeah. So um, this would this you this is totally fine to use. The only thing is like I've learned that using this is not considered best practice because you're importing a lot of unnecessary classes or files that Java creates. So technically, this would be better, but this is completely fine too. Oh, thank you. Are there any other questions on anything? Okay. Thank you guys for coming. I'll see you guys next week.